So now I'm going to go ahead and delete this topology here. Another kind of interesting thing is similar to what we did with the lips, we can take this face here and let's go ahead and close out of all this. We're going to go to Z plugin, UV master. We can keep symmetry turned on. Let's go ahead and unwrap and then flatten and that'll give us our geometry here. So in here, uh, let's try this. Let's go into B, create insert mesh new. So now we have that as a geometry. An alternative, you can go in here, you can say unflatten. And now you can go over here to your morph target. I'm sorry, you can go over here to your UV map. You can say turn bump down to zero, morph UV. Then you can hit B, create insert mesh append. So this one we took straight from the UV master. This one we took from this geometry that we morph UV'd. And so we can go to another file. Like say we want to transfer that topology here. So I've got this head selected. If I take this head and I drag it out, you might see it disappear. It grabbed the wrong side, which is not that big a deal. Temporarily I can go over here and I can say display properties flip after I drag it out. So I can go ahead and drag it out here. And then I can say, you know, it's just kind of unmasked on his face. I'm going to go to Subtool, Split Mask Points, and now I'm going to go down here to Display Properties, Flip. Now you're going to see it looks kind of weird if I hold down Shift. It's actually shattered, and that's <laughs> Unweld All is one of the things we'll talk about later. Uh, but this is unintentional. We're going to go uh, back to Geometry, do a Weld Points, and that should behave a little bit better. So we can go through here, we can move this down, and we do have the cloth transposed. You're going to see as I drag over this face, uh, it's moving over the original collision volume. Let's go ahead and go back to our dynamics, and we'll recalculate this new collision volume we have in our scene. And then now as I kind of move this over the face, it'll drape uh, that topology right on the face. Now before I do that, I can just move this down and we can hit Q to go back into draw mode so we can see a little bit better. We can go into preferences, draw. I'm gonna take this back opacity, I'm gonna turn that down so I can see the geometry behind the lines a little bit better. And we can line up our features a little bit. So as you go through here, we can say this nose is a little bit thinner. So we're just gonna pull these lines in a little bit. Maybe the mouth is a little bit smaller. We can kind of push this topology in a bit. Maybe reposition the eyes. This one doesn't really have nostrils, so we can, I don't know, we can fix that later. But essentially, if you're going from a normal human face to another normal human face, this one's a little bit exaggerated. You know, you just basically push the features into place, and then again with that transpose cloth brush, BTC, you can just take that and then snap to the underlying collision volume. Any strays here, uh, you can try going over here to project all, or you can manually just go in here with your Z modeler brush and just use the move brush or move points with snap to surface. And you just kind of move these into place. So now we have a whole new head with brand new topology that we just cloth wrapped. And if you want to see how I did uh, the rest of the head that was basically just like zero meshing, you know, taking this face and wrapping it to this one this is what we just did and then you can zero mesh the rest of the head and then sew it up using the new edge snapping and stuff like that. Now another thing I did was I took some primitives. So I'm going to go back here. So let's say we had some just generic topology or some generic body mesh that we wanted to retopologize with some primitives. So one thing we can do is let's go out of edit mode, let's hit control N. I'm going to go over here to a, just a regular old cylinder primitive, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode. Let's hit polyframe. If this is the resolution you want, that's fine. If not, let's go down here to initialize. I'm going to say let's go 16 H divides and then 4 V divides just to get a very simple cylinder here. I'm going to go up here and say make poly mesh 3D. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say poly groups, group by normals. And now I just want this dark green uh, to get rid of all these other ones. So I can hold down control shift and I'm going to click this vert right between here so we get those two green poly groups and get rid of that one. And then I can hold down control shift, get rid of that top one here. Again, we can go to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And now we have a new insert mesh brush. So I'm going to hit B, create insert mesh new. And if you want, you can also go through here and you can say insert multiple edge loops and you can just add one with divisions on it. I'm going to hit Control W and let's, uh, let's go ahead and select that new insert, brush, brush, insert mesh brush we made. Hit B, create insert mesh append. So now you have two different versions and you can name them like, oh, you know what, I, I wish I would have renamed this one cylinder divisions. All I need to do is go in here to brush, create, 
I'm going to delete that mesh out of there. And I'm going to replace it with this one. So now this one's named. So we can go back to our guy here. And if we go to the one with no divisions, we can just drag it right on the bicep here. We can hit W, move this into place with our gizmo. And even at this point, if we want to, we can just use our move brush to kind of, you know, move this geometry around to get it close enough. And if we know we're going to need more divisions, let's go ahead and scale this down a little bit. Let's turn on L sim so we can scale it across an axis here. So it's like, okay, I have the geometry I want here, and I need some more geometry. So at this point, instead of having a cylinder with divisions already on it, I can go ahead and add division. But first what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and say split mass points. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on this new topology and then turn on the body topology. And with this new topology selected, let's go to B, grab that insert mesh. This one's grab that cylinder with divisions. We'll go ahead and drag it on our mesh. Let's turn off transparency so it'll so we can see the arm here. Let's go ahead and move this one into place. And let's do B T R to just go to regular transpose here. And again you can use your move uh, move brush, but on this point, let's go over here and say taper. So I can just taper this end down a little bit and maybe I can scale this down just a little bit here so we can just kind of get a general fit. So like I mentioned before I'm going to hover over this edge with my Z modeler brush BZM and I'm going to say insert multiple edge loops and now I can just manually just dial in however many edge loops I want. Now because I started both of these I think with 16 spans for these two insert cylinders that I made I know I can now go into this edge and say with the Z modeler brush, hover over this edge, hold down spacebar, say bridge two holes here to here, and now I can just go through here and basically just bridge those. Now you can try going over here and doing a uh, project doll. You can crank up that project distance, and that'll get it pretty close too. To go to solo mode, you see that it did a pretty decent job. However, some of these get a little bit crunchy. So another thing you can try is to go through here and just like we did in our dress demo. We can go over here, we can recalculate our collision volume to get make sure this body is the collision volume that we want. We're going to go in here to contract in the X and Z direction. So we can run that simulation. And we need to hold these into place a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say hover over an edge with my Z modeler brush. We're going to mask poly loop here and here. And now if you run the simulation, that'll go ahead and just force those verts uh, down. Also turn your inflate down to zero. If we want these points to stay away from each other, we can try going up here too and turning on like self-collision, and uh, those might keep them away a little bit better. Now try going to unmasked, which is where my masked ones are, and run that simulation. I'm just going to tap that one really quickly. And in fact, let's do this. Let's turn off X, because it seems like X is kind of, you know, bringing it in from the left and the right. So we'll just try Z to run that simulation. There we go. So now both points have... Uh, relaxed into place. You can control drag, turn off on mast, run the simulation again one more time. You can see those points are kind of snapped to the surface. Um, to get it to snap exactly to the surface it might be a little bit more accurate to go in here to project all. If you need to, you can also go through here and hold down shift. Uh, earlier we turned on underneath the brush simulation iteration. Let's turn that down to zero. I'm just going to go ahead and we're basically just smoothing this geometry a little bit. If you need to, you can hold down shift, turn down the Z intensity so you can smooth a little bit softer. Go out of solo mode and then rerun the simulation and then I'll go ahead and re-snap that surface. Go over here and hit project all and now you've got new geometry there. Uh, if you want, you can hit control D which is going to give you more subdivisions. Then you can hit project all again. Control G, control D, or hit divide, project all. Control D or hit divide, project all. And now we're projecting that normal or that geometry information uh, to the arms here. So let's do control D one more time, project all. Then we hit move, just transpose these out. And you can see we have brand new topology with all that detail back with subdivision levels now. Now, earlier in this series, we did one called uh, ZBrush 2021 YouTube Safe Model. Uh, so essentially what I did, let's go ahead and delete these arms that I've ever seen here, was I took that model. So if I go in here to the tool, uh, so we have this new uh, model that's YouTube Safe. So I have this one here. I went into the body topology here, and I said append that model here. I'm just going to tap that model, and I'm going to go down here to 
deformation, just hit unify. And uh, because this one, this model was already unified in the ZBrush space, uh, the heat lines up uh, just fine. If that's not the case, you can always just manually scale this uh, into place here. You can turn on transparency and like move these things into place. So then I went through here and I held down control, mask lasso, and got, you know, grab these shoulders. For this guy, you can control tap to blur that a little bit, control tap in your document to invert that. Hold down alt, hit W to go into gizmo mode, hold down alt and tap on the character to kind of set that gizmo axis pivot point. Go ahead and alt drag it around as needed. And now I can go through here and just use that camera rotation to kind of put this body into place. So after spending a few minutes doing that and you know moving the hands and the feet generally into place, what I ended up with is this result. So here's that new topology I kind of pulled into place. It's not perfect, you know, you see the, the butt. Let's go ahead and delete this one out. Uh, this butt's pretty far off. The arms are pretty far off, the back's pretty far off. Um, but, you know, things are generally kind of lined up. I've spent a couple minutes doing that. And then what I did was go over here to contract, turn on X, Y, and Z, uh, you know, recalculate the collision volume, turn the inflate down to zero, and then just ran the simulation. So then when that was done, it was, it just moved those points back into place. Now it's a, still a little bit away from the surface, but all I have to do is with that selected, go back down here to project all, and now I've got those points projected into place. If I didn't catch all of it, just again go into this project all distance, crank that up a bit, and then I'll go ahead and put those uh, into place. So now again, control D to subdivide, project all, control D, project all, control D, project all, and now I have, if I hit uh, W, I've got new topology here. So here's my old, basically decimated Dynamesh topology. And then I've got this topology here that now has subdivision history. It's got the polygroups from that model there. And I can put this back up into subdivision history and have all those details back. And it just took a few minutes uh, to get that new topology snapped for myself.